you're seeing now my my slides, right? Looks good. All right, I'll start then. Um, I am Javier de la Rosa. I work at the National Library of Norway, and I'm going to introduce very briefly a little bit about, about name entity recognition. Name entity recognition is one of the oldest tasks in the NLP, the natural language processing uh, research field. Uh, NLP can be a little bit overwhelming because there is so much going on especially uh, these days, but specifically if we use the machine learning approach to NLP, we can find three different kind of, of NLP tasks, classification and regression, by which we try to assign a number or a label to a chunk of text, clustering, which is uh, trying to group together uh, chunks of text that uh, look alike based on a specific criteria, and then sequence to sequence tasks, which are, for example, machine translation or abstracted uh, summarization. In terms of NLP classification tasks, we can distinguish between sequence-based, for example, sentiment analysis, you have an entire sentence and then you need to decide which label to assign to that sentence, or token-based, which are related to specific words or tokens within a sentence. For example, part of a speech, uh, that is the, the assignment of the grammatical functions of the words, or named entities. But what are named entities? Um, very informally, a named entity is anything that got a name. For example, people got names, countries uh, got names, products and book titles, they all get names. More formally, and this is extracted from uh, William Mattingly, uh, recently published book, name entity recognition is just a, a process in which a system takes an, as an input a chunk of text and then it needs to assign uh, uh, from, a, from, a, from a tag set, it needs to assign those tags to parts of the text. Those talks can be numerical, temporal, nominal, political. Uh, there is a, a lot of variation in, in the kinds of tax that a specific data set or a specific inner problem might have. This is a common example, extracted from one kind of recent paper. Uh, uh, this is how they all look like. So this is a big chunk of text, and then you can see that they are colored differently depending on the kind of tag that is assigned. We, we see people, organization, numerals, percentages, and stuff like that, and even geopolitical uh, entities like uh, North America. NER can be very useful for categorizing tags, for content discovery, recommendation systems, especially in, in the, from, from the library's point of view, entity linking might be a really good use for NER in which you can apply, you can first identify names and then try to reconciliate those with a specific authority file. So that's also part of entity linking, reference resolution, and a lot, a lot of different tasks. But it also got a few challenges. Most notably, uh, natural language uh, is very, it can, it can be very ambiguous. For example, here we are seeing five different sentences, all of them using the word Washington and referring to different meanings of the word Washington. In the first, it's a person. In the second, an organization. In the third, a location. In the fourth, a geopolitical entity. So it's really hard for a machine to distinguish which kind of entity we need to assign uh, to, a, to a specific word based on, on, on the context. Other challenges of, of, of NER is the, the treatment of multi-talking entities. For example, Cecil H. Green Library. It's actually two names in one. Escondido Village Conference Service Center, that's a lot of nouns, uh, but it's just referring to one single entity. And there are also formal differences like typographical, syntactical, or, or abbreviations that make uh, the near problem really hard to tackle. In terms of the development, everything started uh, using just gasset years and then evolved slowly to become. Uh, uh, to start using a neural network um, uh, based approaches. So the most successful ones use conditional random fields and that was all until the, the, the operation of transfer learning and bear. These days, almost all the approaches are based on transfer learning of some sort and name entity recognition is no exception to that. But how do we evaluate this? Uh, given that it's a supervised task, uh, we use the regular metrics like precision, recall, and F measure. But we need to take into account that for evaluating these, sometimes it's not as easy as to assign one tag to a specific word, because sometimes we have multi-token multi words or multi multi-word tokens, and then you need to modify slightly the way in which the metric is calculated. 
for benchmarking things like Connell 2002, 2003, or Wikiam, which covers almost 300 languages uh, are, are used, but there are also a specific language these data sets uh, uh, develop, like Finer, Capitel, or Haddon for Finnish, uh, Spanish, and Arabic, I think. For benchmarking, it's really useful to use the hugging face data sets and, and models. Uh, they are collecting a huge collection of data sets. People can contribute also freely. I'm not, not trying to make any publicity of them. It's just that it's really, really easy to, to use up and put to work. And that will conclude my, my presentation. Sorry, I, I spoke too fast. Javier, that was excellent. Thank you for truly a lightning talk, uh, but one that covered the essentials.